Thank you for staying with us. The Court of Appeal in Abuja has declared the Zamfara State Governorship election as inconclusive. The court also ordered a rerun in three local government areas. The local governments are Maradun, Bernin, Mergaji, and Pukuyum. The court says the Zamfara State Election Petitions Tribunal did not consider the evidence provided by the appellant, which is the All Progressives Congress. The court also dismissed the results provided by the APC and the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, for Maradun local government. Joining us via Zoom to discuss this is lawyer Liberos Oshoma. Liberos, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, good morning. Thank you. Now, let's get first your perspective to this uh, development coming out of Zamfara State, especially the matter of the appeals court saying that um, the court, the tribunal, did not uh, consider the um, appellants, uh, the, the evidence or provided by the appellants and uh, other matters surrounding that. Yeah, um, first and foremost, we'll now begin to look at what evidence are we looking at mm. uh, for election petition disputes. If you, yeah, if you are disputing that um, the figures that were given to you or that the figures that you scored were not the figures that were alloc alloc allocated or allotted to you, you, it is for you to show the figures that you you actually scored in a spreadsheet and how you scored those figures mm. and how those figures were not, you know, those votes were not allotted to you. And they must be through polling unit agents who were those polling units as at those times. So it is not also anywhere near any evidence that was pleaded where the, the court had um, gone ahead to, or where the court had shown explicitly uh, that those evidence of... Um, the polling unit agents were not considered. Also, when um, votes are, are counted by INEC, the, I think we should gradually begin to move away from a situation where the court sits down to reject votes that have been uh, validly allowed by INEC because uh, the provision of Section 63 of the Electoral Act clearly empowers INEC to count ballot papers or reject ballot papers. And so, if INEC, after conduct of election, admits ballot papers used and votes counted, votes validly counted, it is exceptional circumstance, or exceptional grounds or circumstances that the court would go ahead to say, okay, yes, these votes allotted were either overvoted or that this is not the actual figure in that case or that the votes were, were invalid votes that were added to the votes of a candidate. But the idea of the court just saying that, okay, yes, you nullify election on um, in three local government and close your eyes to the valid votes mm. in those local governments, even though, even if you hold that there were irregularities irregularities, asking them to go redo it in most cases would mean to now ask them to go and re, if, if there's rigging or you say there's irregularity, you're asking them to go and repeat irregularity. So, and you see these inconsistencies in some cases, because in some cases, like in the case of Oshu, where the court identified that where they were overvoting, what the court simply did is to cancel outrightly all the votes from those areas where they were overvoting. In the same vein, when a court identifies that there were issues with number of votes counted and allotted, in that case, what the court should do is if votes were subtracted, is the court is it for the court to add them? We saw it happen in the Shomoles case, you know, some years ago. Or you remove the vote if the votes are invalid votes. But a situation where you just say evidence were not considered by the tribunal. And that so, to that extent, go and redo election in three local governments on the ground because the appellant complained that the vote he scored were not added to his vote. But the tribunals also rejected those votes that he said he scored mm -hmm. and now asked parties to go and redo the process. 
All right, and then there's also the uh, you know controversial issue. Uh, well, whether you agree that whether that controversy has now been rested regarding the place of um, IREV, the court also you know spoke on that issue, saying it was a viewing portal, uh, so to speak, and not mm -hmm. an, a vote uh, collision system. That is where I'm coming to. That's I wanted you to ask the question, and if you didn't ask, I would have brought it in. Because that's where I, I would fought, fought the, the court. The Supreme Court holding that IREV was a viewing portal does not mean that if results are collated using results from IREV, that it invalidates the results. No, that's not the position of the Supreme Court without due respect to the court. If you go to INEC rule re regulation number 93, it is expressly stated there, and the Court of Appeals, sitting at the, as a court of first instance in the Presidential Election Petition Tribunal, quoted copiously that provision also, that when in collecting results, the INEC shall resort to the resort sheets from the lower rung of the collection center. In the absence of a resort sheet, INEC shall use the results from the IREV. In the absence of the result sheet and results from IREV, INEC shall use the result sheet handed over to the security agents at the poll. So you have three methods of INEC collating results. One is the uh, hard copies of the result sheet. Mm -hmm. In the absence of the hard copies of the result sheet, INEC can resort to the result as posted on the IREV. So what the uh, petitioners were disputing in the presidential election petition was that the uh, failure to use IREV was fatal to the result, that what the INEC did was just usage of the manual result sheet and they did not use IREV. It was on that ground that the Supreme Court heard that INEC is empowered by their own rule to use man. Hmm. The Supreme Court did not expressly state that results cannot be collated using iron. Mind you, if you read the judgment of the Supreme Court in the case of Oshu, the Supreme Court explicitly, explicitly heard that iron in the Failure in the event that it is when the manual collation, center, manual collation fails that the INEC can resort to IREF. So where INEC, for example, collate results using IREF in the absence of the manual results by their Rule 93, the court has no power to invalidate those results so collated. So uh, that's why I think, it, I, I think it is high time the court should should take a step back and ensure that they do not interfere on on duly in the conduct of election when the procedures laid down by the umpire have been followed that was what the supreme court also did in the presidential election tribunal when they refused to interfere in the conduct what these tribunals are doing is an interference in the conduct of the election and not interpretation of the rules. They are interfering. Election is a democratic election is a rule for the majority and not by the courts. A situation where the majority have taken a step and voted, and then the court now come using such flimsy excuses to say that, oh, look, because you use IREF to collate. And so on that ground, those literary local governments where results were collated using IREF you invalidate those uh, local government and ask them to go and redo it. The, that is not the law. With all due respect, that is not the law. You can read Regulation 93 of INEC guidelines. And the Supreme Court, the Court of Appeal in the Presidential Election Tri Tribunal and uh, the Court of Supreme Court relied also on that regulation. That was why they did not invalidate the election because 
the rule says you the first line shall be collation manually. Right. It is when you don't have the resource sheet manually that you resort to IREF. So right. if it is proved that those resource sheets were not available manually as at the time of collation, there was nothing wrong in using IREF to collate those results. Okay, let's look at the controversies uh, because there are those who have said that um, uh, this controversy has been stirred up by the appeal squad is becoming worrisome looking at the cases we have seen from uh, Plateau State, Zamfara and Kanu. And there are those calling that the president should perhaps rein in uh, on uh, the appeal squad because uh, it, the confidence reposed on the judiciary might just be eroding in a matter of time. So perhaps you talk to us about the implication of these interpretations that we are seeing uh, on our democracy on the whole. Yeah, um, if you remember, I think um, a few years back, between 1999 and um, I think 2010, 2011 or so, um, election, uh, governorship election petition matters used to terminate at the Court of Appeal. And it became very shameful and worrisome for the Supreme Court just, judges when the Court of Appeal were giving conflicting judgment, just like they are doing now. On matters that have been laid to rest by the Supreme Court, you see the Court of Appeal will take a different turn, just like we have seen in the case of Kano, and we are also seen in Zamfara. And so, to correct that anomaly, you remember in the case of uh, Oshomole, the president, president Court of Appeal, Justice um, Abdullah, had to sit on that panel. He delivered the judgment on that panel that because of lack of trust. That's also what we are saying with the president Court of Appeal now. That's why she in innovated that novel idea of lumping all the uh, election petitions into two jurisdictions to correct these anomalies. And also in the case of... Um, uh, I think, or show the then President Court of Appeal, Justice Ayo Salame, that eventually led him into trouble, also headed that panel because of lack of trust in the conflicting judgment of the Court of Appeal. So, to correct all of this anomaly, the Supreme Court, in its wisdom, um, amended the rules so that uh, election petition, governorship election petition, would terminate at the Supreme Court. That also has its disadvantages because it put pressure on the candidates and also put pressure on the finances. So in this case now, we are also seeing a repeat of all of those inconsistencies. In Plateau, for example, on the Court of Appeal decision, the same tribunal, using the same set of facts, delivered two different sets of judgments. One, if you remember, the Supreme Court before the election had ruled that the PDP ought to conduct congresses in 17 local governments in Plateau, which they failed to do. They conducted congresses in only five local governments. So against that backdrop, when the matter came up at the tribunal, the APC also tendered that judgment of the courts that primaries were not conducted, uh, sorry, congresses were not conducted in 17 local governments. And the, the tribunal overlooked it and held that the governor was duly and validly nominated. But in the same PDP for House of Assembly and Re House of Rep, the same tribunal held that failure to conduct congresses was fatal to the nomination of the members and invalidated the election. And so one was now wondering, how do you conduct, how do you give two different judgments considering the same set of facts? But the Court of Appeal, using the Supreme Court laid down position in the case of Zamfara in 2019 and um, Rivers in the same 2019, on failure to conduct congresses, now heard that the governor was not duly nominated on the ground that the congresses that produced him, the candidate, or the, the congresses that were produced him, were not validly conducted. In the case of uh, Kano, for example, the Supreme Court also had laid to rest on membership of political parties. In the case of Peter Obi, when the APC challenged the candidature of Peter Obi on the ground that by virtue of Section 77, he was not a member of the party as at the time the register was submitted, the court held in its wisdom 
that membership of a, of a political party is not open to debate at the election petition, and then also that it is not open to the debate of opposing party. So that laid that matter to rest. So the canon now ruling that membership of a political party, of a governorship candidate that is duly elected, duly nominated and duly elected, it can be called into question at the tribunal. For me, that is going against the Supreme Court judgment. Also, if you look at what canon, if you look at, permit me to quickly also read, the Supreme Court had held that by virtue of Section 63 of the Electoral Act, if you permit me to quickly read, that subject to subsection 2, a ballot paper which does not bear official mark prescribed by the commission shall not be counted. But subsection 2 says, if the returning officer is satisfied that a ballot paper which does not bear the official mark was from a booklet of ballot paper which was furnished to the presiding officer of the polling unit in which the vote was cast for use and the election in for use in the election in question, he or she shall notwithstanding the absence of the official mark count that ballot paper. So against that pronouncement, that decision, that provision of the Electoral Act, the Court of Appeal still went ahead and the tribunal in, in the case of Kano to invalidate ballot papers counted by INEC recognized by INEC as ballot paper coming from their official booklet, even though they were not marked. I invalidated those, those uh, ballot papers. So you now begin to wonder which precedent is the Court of Appeal following. And so that's why I think that the court, which is, should ordinarily be the last hope of the common man, should refrain from being used to invalidate elections on such flimsy excuses. Let democracy, democracy rest with the people. The right, people who right. celebrated I, the Supreme I want Court to take judgment. You back. Sorry, quickly. All right. Sorry, quickly. The All people right. who celebrated the Supreme Court judgment in uh, the presidential election petition should also condemn because that, those are the same issues. The APC, I see the APC celebrating in Kano. No, they should join hands to condemn that judgment that was given to them, that it is not in tandem with the laid down principles of the Supreme Court in their own judgment in the presidential election. And then, lastly, quickly, I'll quickly just mention this. Even though we still await the judgment of the Court of Appeal on that, the case of Ebony, for example, also is distinct. You have a candidate who is a member of two political parties at the same time. So let me listen to you now. Right. Back to your earlier point on the issue of um, the position of IREV and collation of results. You quoted uh, order. Regulation. The regulation no, yes. 93. 93. Uh, of, yes. yes of the um, INEC regulation. And we, we saw how yes. that issue was, you know, extensively deliberated upon uh, at the court, especially the presidential election petition court, where it yes. said that the, as it speaks now, the Electoral Act is the only binding document regarding the issue of collation of results and said it is it can only be done manually. So the IREV um, saying that IREV, you can fall back to IREV if there's an issue with uh, EC from EC8. That's not true. Right. You know, That's so, not so true. That's help, not us, true. help us to clarify that point. Because on the other hand is the fact that um, INEC also has the duty now, the freedom to determine what mode of collation and transmission uh, that, that it wants to use. So the court did not say that it is only electoral act that guides or binds the INEC, by the INEC. The court said that INEC, by the provisions of the Electoral Act, has power to make rules to, for the conduct of the election. And such rules made by INEC would be read in consonance with the provisions of the Electoral Act. And what was the fact in issue in the presidential election petition? We need to distinguish these issues so that people will have a clarity. What was the fact in issue? The fact in issue was that Failure to use IREV, solely failure to use IREV, that it was fatal to the declaration of the results, that the results were used, were counted manually. And the court said no, that INEC has the powers to count results manually by their own rules. 
It is when the manual results, the hard copies are not available, that INEC will resort to the copies pasted on IREV. But by the way, that IREV was created for transparency as a viewing portal. The court did not expressly say that you cannot use IREV to, co to collate results. No. Right. That is why I quoted, I quoted Rule 93 of INEC Rules Guidelines for you that on guidelines for collating results. But it in is not in the results, Electoral that was why, Act. The controversy now is, is that regulation binding on the court because it is not in the yes. Electoral Act. The Electoral Act, the, the, the Electoral Act even talks about electronic collation of results. Uh, unfortunately, the Electoral Act talks about right. electronic unfortunately, of results. We, that was why, quickly, quickly, quickly. We, we have me, limited time. The Electoral yeah. Act only recognizes the We do not have time, the Kemi. Beavers, Kemi. The we do not have system. time. Maybe you will need to expatiate, and most importantly, the Supreme Court will need Our to... Our time is less than one issue. minute. If yes, you can do that in 30 seconds. This. Yes, that's why the Electoral Act talks about transmission of results. Transmission, it uses transmission, transfer. And in interpreting that section, the Court of Appeal, sitting at the Court of First Instance in the Presidential Election Petition Tribunal, Rule define right. what transmission Our time is, is up, Liberals, unfortunately. 93. Unfortunately, our time is up, Liberals. Uh, I would have loved to ask you what will justice then be in this matter from your point of view? Quickly, can you do that? Yes, the justice of the matter is that this judgment in canon is contrary to the presidential election petition judgment right. of the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. and, and so... That's why I said APC should not rejoice and celebrate one while celebrating actually, the other. Because actually, we are supposed to be looking at Zamfara. <laughs> but but, they are, but they it's are fine. It's fine. Somehow. It's fine. We'll have to let you go now. Lawyer Liboros Oshoma, thank you for your time on the program. Thank you very much. My pleasure, Lord. Right.